What is up, you guys? And of course, welcome to the first week of the season six of the Vala Pokemon League. Now, before we go into the game, as you guys have seen on the screen already, here are when the team preview start and the battle itself. You don't want to hear my team analysis of well, I guess my opponent, of course, Shui. Uh, well, follow that link, of course. As, uh, as you guys can see already, the, the team here I'm going up against, which is Chewie's, uh, we see the likes of Politoed, Mega Swampert, Nihileo, Duskmaw, Lucario, Glisco, Volcarona, God of War, Shinonic, and Furfro. So, I'll be honest, I wasn't necessarily too scared for this team. There are a few key mons here that are big threats towards me. Those are the Pokemon that I can't sleep on, but there are also a lot of Pokemon that I wouldn't necessarily call them that effective against me since my team here is not only very speedy but it also is built on pivots and it doesn't look like there's a lot of Pokemon here that can block pivots besides Volt switching with my Swampert and Lisco which are well let's face it key mods here to pull me out so uh, Polytoro with Mega Swampert and Helego is very very big threats for me and then with Lucari which I think is tough Glisco Volcarona which is well, very tough then with Gar Garbodor which I really felt or Shinotic Shinonic is not a big threat, but should be considered that it's a bulky grass type that has strength sap, which could be annoying. And it actually winning against a few matchups. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not liking that, not a whole lot at least. But overall, I felt that the team I'm going up against is definitely likes of Polito, Swampert, Nehalego, Lucario, Gliscor, and Volcarona. And then of course, the runner up is between Garbodor and Shinonic. Um, so I seen the uh, build there was. Well, I need something to block Mega Swampert, so Gorgeist was very given, the bulkier variant, uh, and it, it proved to be rather effective as a special defensive variant, which, which have Seed Bomb and Rock Slide, but with Lead Seed. Uh, Rock Slide is only there for Volcarona if it tries to set up in my face, that so you'll be able to want to kill it. And just overall, like, Gorgeist is such a heavy, um, how would you say, it's such an easy Pokemon to set up against, so having something to punish that is going to prove to be useful this game. Uh, I actually consider combo to this battle, but decided against that combo do all World Corona, but don't believe all Corona is too big of a threat. Uh, Celesteela is definitely making it. Mega Beedrill and Seraora are definitely here to pivot around. Uh, Seraora here is carrying the likes of Hidden Power, Ice, and Grass, not scared with Shukaberry. Basically, Seraora is fairly bulky and it's really speedy. Um, it doesn't excel in any offensive stat, but it's very balanced. So, if I can't want to kill something, at least I can outspeed and hit them twice with a sugar berry. So, yeah, I'm really confident there. Uh, Incinera is not making it. It's probably the only one I felt wasn't going to be this good. Uh, Stalmy is with Warrior C and a little bit modest. Able to outspeed Nihilega, which is his fastest Pokemon. Uh, besides that, hmm, decent Pokemon here. We run the lines of Rapid Spin. Hydro Pump, um, Ice Beam, and Psy Shock. Was considering Grass Knot, but felt that Hydro Pump should be enough. Uh, Slurpuff is a Pokemon didn't carry into this game. Was considerate, the set would have been a better upset and just be able to sweep whatever comes my way, but Gliscor is Gliscor, and well, I have to kind of account for that. So the last mod that I actually made it was not Cravenol either, was Crocodile. Uh, a taunt Crocodile actually with the likes of Stealth Rocks and Earthquake and knock off yeah very decent build i would say average crocodile which is speedier spears has speed in mega lucario or his lucario not the mega variant that would have been insane but the rather <laughs> the standard one since it's 90 base speed crocodile is 92 so yeah <clears throat> because it's going to be very important this game so yeah going to this game celestila mega Beedrill, sarah aura stami cool guys and crocodile so with that said let's see the team matchup so I think we predicted rather, rather well here what we're going up against. Now, we'll, I'll be honest and say, not seeing Polito here in my team matchup, I was really surprised. I was definitely looking for Stami to have a blast here with analytic boost at Hydro Pumps with Warrior MC. Not having that, yeah, mm. well, it, it kind of took some of my joy away to be honest. But overall here we see Lucario, we, we see the Volcarona and the Helego, the Gliscor and the Mega Swampert. Shinotic is one problem he actually decided to use here and I'll be honest and say I didn't necessarily predict or prep too much towards that Pokemon. I felt I've dealt with that rather easily but now that I see it I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling that. 
like is a Pokemon that probably can wall a few of my Pokemon rather nicely. Um, and of course, Restraysab can be very annoying to take out. So overall here, I would say that we possibly aren't seeing a hazard removals besides Glisco that is. And you know, quite frankly, depending on the Gliscor, it could be a setup variant, which I was predicting here, or it could still be the Stallbreaker. But if the Stallbreaker set, then Celesteela are not having a tough time against that. So I'm, I'm definitely curious to see what that set is. Now, Stalmy will be my lead here for obvious reasons. It's the fastest Pokemon on the field, and barring, of course, possible Scarfer, so it should be able to be rather effective here. Um, and yeah, we're gonna just go buy it and see how it goes. So with that said, let's go into the match. So we get a really, really strong start here as our opponent is actually gonna lead off with the Wall Corona. So I'm gonna just go for the Warium C directly because I know I'm forcing him out and I am on speeding. So I was really thinking, okay, Shinati is gonna come in here and that's gonna be a bummer. We get to make a Swamp Bird here. The thing is here, that's a dead Swamp Bird by all the means of the word. The thing is here, I was kind of ranting with you when drafting that Pokemon, you know, it's only one grass not away from dying. And while that's true, I'm not providing that. I'm providing an analytic Hydro Pump boost here, and with the Warrior MC, and that's a dead Swamp Bird, and a great start for us. Now he's gonna, of course, respond with Shinotic. I'm not feeling Shinotic, I think that's a really, really, really tough Pokemon to deal with. I'm gonna easily send in here the Mega Beedrill, which is even wrong in its HP, and that's not annoying, annoying at all. And I'm gonna go directly for, of course, that wonderful um, U-turn, just to really, really feel the pivot. And what do you know? You know, Volcaron is his response, and it feels, it feels like, you know, this Pokemon could carry Flame Body. That wouldn't happen to me first turn, right? I would be a Vortnut, but no, my old friend comes back at me and just gets the flame body you know who uses the flame body nobody yet here i am getting burned first touch it is as it is I, I, i'm seriously I'm, I'm not mad i'm confused and i'm gonna send in sarah aura he's gonna do the very easy switch to gliscor here and the thing is here i don't want to really try to overcheck this pokemon i do need sarah aura here since of course my beetroot is wasted as I'm gonna get to carry all and I'm going to try to get my rocks up. Uh, now he'll show protect, which means one thing. This is the stall breaker Gliscor. That basically means I have really nothing to worry about here now because well, we see Toxic, like there is really he possibly have a quick and roost. That's about it. I, he shouldn't be able to set up rocks on his own even. So he doesn't have defunct. A Volcarona cannot switch in that many times, and everything that's force up will get hurt, so I can easily send in my Gibraltar, which of course is the Celesteela. He'll predict that, he goes to his Lucario, try to get some lead wave, well, thing is here, I, I don't fear Lucario, as um, I gotta get an adamant crane punch in my face to kind of, kind of feel that I should respect that Pokemon, and I'll go for a lead seed here, but quite frankly, <laughs> I was so surprised that he hit me. <laughs> I didn't expect him to hit that hard, and uh, I really can't stand here. While I do have access to Lags of Earthquake, I don't want to get some uh, damage on this Pokemon. So I'm just going to go to Kiefer, my Beedrill, which really can't do anything either, but I can buy it and uh, just see if he stays in or not. Uh, I'm just kind of baiting for the Bullet Punch to see if he hacks this or not, or if I can outspeed it with my Stami. Uh, because even though I'm burned, I should still be able to do a fair amount of damage, actually, because I'm still an adamant beetle, because I don't need to speed it in his team. Uh, so I just switch out to his Gliscor again, and as I said, U-turn is my only play, and uh, there we go. And as you guys see, I do move that HP bar, that's a very unseen thing on the Gliscor, though Poison Hill will recover that damage, but I will force him out with, you know, that's a star on the field. Folks get that. As I'll actually go directly for an hydro pump. I was considering Ice Beam, was feeling that you know I'm I'm just baiting in Lucario and I really want to get the damage on that. And Hydro Pump seems to be doing a lot of damage here, but the thing is here we have to consider the analytic boost, which means that an ice beam most likely won't take it out, and I still don't want to get any prior damage on my Starmie as I send in Beedrill, which of course kind of wall Shinotic, there's really nothing Shinotic can do outside of possible HP fire, I guess. 
I'm feeling confident in this matchup. I, I don't feel this is gonna go against me for any means, to be honest. Uh, the easy play here would be go for Poison Jab, but he's not gonna risk that, I'm very aware of that. And I do the exact same play as I always do, which is U-turning. Now it's four times resisted though, and that means that Lucario is not necessarily worried about that, as I can easily send in Balrog, which is my Gorgeist. Um, because I should be able to wall a Pokemon really nicely, we see Poison C, so... Well, he's clearly gonna go for Poison MC, that's that's just how it works. Uh, I was very in sports sense, to be honest, since I don't have will but I have actually Toxic over it. No, wait, I have Rock Slide, Seed Bomb, Lead Seed, and Dysentesis, so I can't cripple Lucario. Um, but actually, the thing is here, Poison MC doesn't necessarily do that much damage to me. I do miss the Lead Seed though, and I think that's awful. Uh, I definitely needed that, but I, don't, I still don't have to worry about Lucario as I just keep going for you know, and for synthesis here and then I will respond with Elite Seed again um, because well let's face it I kinda I kinda want the recovery I really don't think this Lucario can hurt my Gore guys whatsoever and he realizes that himself as it switches into the Volcarona which are pretty much dead by switching should die to Elite Seed which I yet again and unfortunately do miss but I'm special defensive, I should be able to leave the, or live this plane forward. Well, I'm not. It turns out that he's actually Lifer, which felt really, really risky considered with no hazard removal. But, well, here we are and I lose, actually, <laughs> my my Gorgas here. And the thing is here, here comes the second mistake of the game. Uh, I was pretty sure I was outspeeding Nihilego. It turns out I tie with Nihilego and that was a massive mess up. I do miss actually on Stormy here and that means I need to double check whether or not I was misinvesting or if this scoffs it so I'm gonna send in my B-drill pretty much stacking I'm gonna go for Pursuit thinking that he's gonna lose Nihilego if he stays in and go for Drill Run but I do outspeed Pursuit doesn't do necessarily anything and he's gonna go for Thunderbolt so to be honest this play was very 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 risky but this basically means okay I am able to outspeed Sarah Aura is still in a very 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 safe environment here Plasma Fish should be able to take this Pokemon out any day of the week. He's very aware of that and sends in the Lucario, which won't take this damage that well. That well, um, you know, the Plasma Fist, even though this is a Neve, unboosted or revisted uh, Plasma Fist, it still is enough to take out Lucario. And well, <clears throat> here we are. So from here on, he's gonna send in the Gliscor, and I don't yet want to try to risk this because while Hidden Power Eyes could very well take it out. At this point, because you no, know, it's not the Yasha Berry. Um, it's still risky due to Nihilego. I need something to speed that because neither my Crocodile nor my Celesteela deals with that Pokemon head on that well. <clears throat> and I think my opponent was very aware of that. As I'm gonna do a very, a bit of a read here, thinking that his easy switching would be the Nihilego. So I actually went directly for an Earthquake, and that pretty much guaranteed me to win because now he has two Pokemon left in Shinotic and Gliscor. Neither of them can take out Celestila whatsoever, and neither of them can take out Serora even, or they, they, they can't do anything is what I'm trying to say. The thing is here, the, the, the thing is a little bit stalling here because two of my opponent here is trying to find a way to kind of come back, but he's going to resolve to the tri the oldest trick in a book when you use a Gliscor, which is Rue stalling for a possible PP stall, but I have the means to kind of counter that, but it, it takes some time before I take that decision. Now, the thing I want to tackle here that I think a few players here are aware of, and um, should probably speed this up a little bit, however, and that was bothering me because I really felt that this game would have ended up a lot different had I played this smarter. The first is, of course, not, not risking, you know, um, the B drill <coughs> go for U turn that early. Um, clearly, of course, Volcarona was response. Flame body is a thing. I, I know that. Just surprised to see it every time. But the other thing was that actually was bothering me. That was that the Stormy situation. I should have risked ever since Nihilego. I had an option to switch into something else. Stormy was very effective towards this game, and um, there were Pokemon that wasn't that effective. Like Crocodile could easily sack that, and uh, because. Like I said, I didn't want Volcarona to set up from the first, and then when Hileo came in, 
well, it wasn't necessarily the scariest Pokemon for me to deal with. So I felt losing Stommy, kind of tough, kind of tough. Uh, and then of course, going for the pursuit of a Drill Run. I should have just gone for a Drill Run. I got a crit there, and I would have killed it anyway uh, because it's four times effective. And I think <laughs> going for a pursuit, thinking that he would try to preserve that, not to lose the game. That was just naive of me. I had to save switching towards the Pokemon he would send in if he did that, which was Gliscor anyway. So yeah, I kind of choked there. But would you recover here? And as you guys see on the screen, I get the Taunt play, and then we get, of course, the Sugar Berry combination with the Inner Power Rise, and that's a wrap. And of course, uh, Trio Victory in my favor. But yeah, I had the option to play this game safer, and it kind of kind of is bumming me that I didn't play as safe as I possibly could have done here. Your props to Chewy. I think Daniha Lego kind of legged on the way he played that. While I, in some fashion, would say you know that that was a tough play or a very risky play, I still kind of also respect that play because it meant that he got a very massive momentum that he necessarily didn't have. I was outplaying him here, I, I'm really not going to deny that. And going that ballsy got pushed me back quite hard and it worked great to his favor and I had to find a way to recover. Luckily I had the option still with um, Sarah War, which definitely could be a possible response to everything, but it definitely did feel like that. So, like I said, major props to him, I think he played that part really well. Uh, other than that, you know, I'm happy with my performance there. I feel a bit rusty. It's been two months since I played a Wife of Battle, and while I did win my last Wife of Battle, which being, of course, the BPL final, I still know, you know, concept versus uh, how to play is two different things, but I still believe I hold the concept right. It's just the performance that need to come up there, and right now, I'm not there. I definitely need to get more level headed and probably play more with Wife of Battle, actually, just to get into soon. Uh, but really, but honestly, guys, of course, as always, well watching. I hope you enjoy this content. I really hope to provide all the wiper battles from this league, and of course, other people's battles in this league also, because it's it's a blast. It's a definitely enjoyable thing to do. Uh, so with that said, been watching, and I'll see you in the next battle. Until then, take care.